Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. Um, we were all told we had to be here, and we are under threat, so nobody's buying it. Okay, we're talking Suicide Squad. With me today, I'm Dub, I'm here with Skeeter, I'm here with Griffin, and we're here with Blyze. How are y'all doing today? Doing good, man. Doing Excited good. To, to talk about this movie. Yeah. So, um, let, let's actually hit into kind of what the Suicide Squad is before. Okay, first up, spoilers. Um, but let's be honest, if you haven't watched it within the first week, yeah, I don't know if you're going to watch it or not. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many spoilers, because honestly, the biggest spoiler is within like the first 10 minutes of the movie. Um, <laughs> it is. That's true. It is. It is. But it's very I, I, true. Yeah. Just, just for a few seconds or a few minutes, I'd like to discuss what is the Suicide Squad and... What do we think about the Suicide Squad? Um, let's actually start with Blyze on this one. What do you know about the Suicide Squad going into this movie? Um, so I actually knew uh, quite a bit going into this movie. I know that they started in like the early 30s and 40s. Um, and it was kind Task of just a... Task Force X. Yeah, Task Force X. Um, and it was just kind of a way to try and get some B characters rolling um, mm -hmm. with DC. Um, they didn't... They were at a point, and I think this was, the comic industry always has its ups and its downs. So this yeah. was on a lull, and they were wanting to get more things printing, and they wanted to introduce new characters that they already had in their yeah. wheelhouse. So they brought in these characters, B characters to be Task Force X, and um, try and jump sales. Um, I don't think it really caught on until in a lot of people don't like to hear this but until new 52 came around and with the introduction of harley quinn to a um, personal opinion okay. harley quinn is what brought them up into the the light i know they I, had their stuff in the 90s i let, let, let me let me debate this with you just for a second sure. because um with gail simone's run of secret six which ran parallel to um uh, to suicide squad i think that that was that had a lot of notoriety at that point. I say sure. I know this is like that's that's kind of picking, but then that was with before we had Harley and all that on the team. Um, but yes, I do agree that Harley being on the team took it to a different level altogether. I think that new 52 run of Suicide Squad is what made these the the first movie in this movie possible. We wouldn't have had these movies to been made unless the that run of the suicide squad there's happened. no suicide suicide squad movie without harley period <laughs> the i think the, one of the big things is like oh like you have to think in the early early years you know in that golden age if you will it was a lot different you know than kind of what the suicide squad actually needed as it kind of twisted into the silver age you know and got into the 60s and it got kind of kind of crazy yeah you know when comic books really took a twist that's when you know things started to pick up for the suicide squad i think and then they kind of you know leveled out and then the new 52 happened yeah. we get harley we get the the big bang and we're there we're like boom ah. so and it came into what it is today yeah what do you think griffin i think uh it's just interesting how um I mean, I don't want to make too many comparisons to like, obviously, just because of the film, uh, Guardians? But to the, <laughs> the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, not, 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 a, not, not about like the film, but the comics itself. Like, uh, I'm not too familiar with uh, the Guardians comics, but like, I know that they they swap characters all the time. Like, yeah. the team is never the same. There's mm -hmm. always like you'd think like you have your core members but even in reality like they always switch out and so i feel like task force x has gone through so many incarnations but i i feel like at the same time throughout uh animated projects the movies um even the comics like they've it's always they've always just kind of like 
switched out. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually kind of like that. But I, I like that idea. Yeah. You know, it's not like the the Justice League where it's, you got your staple characters. Um, but yeah, that's what I've, I've always found interesting about the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I think Suicide Squad, um, you can agree or disagree if you want, but I think that I feel like that if we didn't have Suicide Squad from like years ago, we would not have the anti-hero that we have now. These are all bad guys. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the quote unquote good guy that is controlling them, which is really technically the bad guy. And so it gave you a chance to root for the bad guys and care about the bad guys a lot more than unless you're Joker or Lex or something. You don't care about the bad guy as much, I think, anyway. So thank you, Suicide Squad, for creating that for us. Um, Yeah. So philosophically, just for a second, and then we'll get on to the fun stuff. Do you believe it is 100% wrong to do what they're doing? Is it right? Do the ends justify the means? And not just for this movie, but for Suicide Squad in general, do the ends justify the means in in a perfect world? Uh, Skeeters, let's start with you on that one. So the, the best, the best thing about that I can say is for instance, polka dot. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. Totally the ends justify the means because of what was going on in his world. Yeah. Like he said the entire time, I'm ready to go. The yeah. other ones, like, were they? So, you know, people had something to live for, you know, just like in the original um Suicide Squad in that in that first movie, you know, people had something that they held over their head. Yeah. Except one character, you know, one or two characters, you know, in the films. She held something over everybody. Everybody. It didn't matter. But this one, like you really saw, like Polka Dot didn't have, you know, he was ready. Yeah. So, yes, the ends justify the means. Totally. Fair enough. Griffin, what about you? Yeah, that that's a, that's a hard one. I think that, um, I think the, with, I mean, with the comics and stuff like that, and just the kind of like the animated projects that I've seen, there never really was uh, a lot, or maybe like not the comics that I've read, but at least the animated projects and the other media, mm-hmm. they didn't make that big of a deal about the, you know, the, the bombs, the Im- implants. But um, in the films, I felt like the first one, it was much more of a big deal than it was this one, which I kind of liked. But at the same time, um, I have to agree with dad that I feel like Polka Dot was the only character like everybody else was just kind of like they were kind of calling it in the film. And they're, oh, sorry. They were, they were, they were kind of, they were. It's all good. Um, you got, you got guitar out. That was awesome. Griffin got his first guitar. <laughs> but yeah, you, you get my point. Yeah. Blythe, what about you? Um, yeah, I think it fits for this this universe and for what's um, what's going on with it, um, especially with as bad of a person as Amanda Waller is. Um, no, what, she's vile. I mean, yeah, um, but she does give the opportunity for things to get done. Yeah, the they no matter how you look at it or their methods or whatever the case may be. I mean, they did save the world in these two movies and across the books and things like that. They usually end up saving the world as well, even from um, the heroes. I know the suicide squad game is coming out and the whole premise of that game is that uh, Superman turns and they're going to have to take him out at some point. So I think um, the ends definitely justify the means. And in this, in this case, this universe, um, and like I said, they get the job done. Fair enough. Now I, I believe it's community service. Um, do, do people <laughs> let, okay, let's, let, let's break this down to the simplest terms. Do people want to be on the side of the road, cleaning up garbage or whatever? No, but they're doing it because you know what you're, instead of just rotting in jail, why, why don't you pay your debt to society? Mm-hmm. 
I look at it the same way. I, I know that that's probably not the most popular opinion, but I really feel like it's community service and they do have the option to say no, kind of. Um, mm, not really. We uh, saw that with Bloodsport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's let's move on to the movie itself. Um, let's hit the first 10 minutes first. Okay, here's your first spoiler. Okay, in the first 10 minutes, everybody dies. And my favorite part of this this is when they are making bets on who dies first. Because let's be honest, if we were all in the same room together and watching it at the same time, we would be having that same conversation. Okay, who's going to die first? This guy's definitely going to die first. I think that that's it was that was like such a thing into the fans. You didn't you didn't like that, Wise? I I don't know if I would personally say if I would I put was money on it, a, but in a room monitoring people, I would be betting on who is going to die first. This is a normal thing for them. It, it, see, and it's weird though because um it it is for them, but then as the movie progresses, they they seem to be getting upset by, it. especially the the one I forget his name, but the the one main character that they're watching like go through this, the guy from New Girl, um, he seems to be having like an issue with it the whole time. Um, but this opening scene, I loved yeah. because the question, the biggest question about this movie going into it after Fandom last year when they announced all the characters that were going to be in it and they had the the big sheet that had every name on it. There's like 50 names on there is how do you juggle a cast of that size? That's exactly how you do it. You kill half of them in the first 10 minutes of the movie. And, and how that was some serious star power. Did you guys see everybody that was in there? Yes. Yes. I would say the only, the one person I was upset about, that they killed right off the bat because I loved his character in the first one was Jai Courtney as Boomerang. Yes. I wish that was they a would, bummer. Yeah. I wish they would have kept him. I'm glad they killed Weasel because every scene oh my gosh, up to I that, hated that un- so unsettling the whole time. Yes. It was such an unsettling character. It was bad CGI was, on top of it. I was busting up oh. laughing. <laughs> I was yeah. busting up laughing every time he was on when he was just oh sitting there God. like just like his eyes, like dude. his eyes, go in the opposite <laughs> directions. Up oh, yes. And honestly, if he would have stuck through the movie, we would be having a different conversation about this movie. I think so. I agree. Because I it was he. That was a terrible character. Um, and I, I'm guessing it was on purpose so that the yeah. He would, no, that's. I think wild. that that lowers the fans' expectations going in, and then they kill it, and you're like, okay. This is smooth. Yeah, I don't care what throw King Shark out, out, out at me. We are good now. Yeah. And when you promise it, when you promise your brother a a, a spot in the movie, you had, know, you gotta do yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, a couple, by the way. He was yeah, also calendar is. man. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was probably <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the movie. I freaked out. No, and um, let's let's talk the cameos for a second before we get into the movie itself. With the cameos. Let's see. Okay, so let in the beginning we have um, Nathan Phylon. We have uh, what's his name, Flula Borg, who's yeah, a Flula hilarious Borg. German comic. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did we have in there in that first part? Michael yeah, Rooker. Uh, Michael, Michael Rooker. Yeah, we have Yondu. Yeah, <laughs> Sean Gunn is there. Yes. Um, so we had, and we had a lot of Guardians crossover. I'm not gonna lie. The fact that Michael Rooker saved, like, pulled the freaking weasel like, out of the water. I'm and like, and then they killed him. You're like, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm Mary freaking when, Poppins. When they were doing that <laughs> shot where he's like swimming away, um, but right before they kill him, did you guys think that he was like having like a, a mental break? Yes, or like his power was to like see the future and they were gonna like rewind time. And then go I, back, and something else was going to play out. Like I was Dad like, "That's going to happen." And then <laughs> Dad kept saying there it was a dream, and I'm like, "I don't know. Why would they be cutting back to Wall?" I was like, was "This a is dream. a dream. Like this is for yeah. real a dream. Like there's no way that this star power, that this um, <laughs> Nathan Fillion, Michael Rooker, all these dudes like boomerang. I'm all no. Like they just whap 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 whap. And I mean, 
especially Peter, uh, Pete, what's his name? Right off the bat. Uh, Pete, Black Davidson. Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. Oh, yeah. Which is like, a guy you want to see shot anyway. In film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in film. <laughs> in film. In film. Right. No, but dude, like Griff called it out in the beginning. He goes, just so you guys know, because mom was watching it with us. And he goes, just so you guys know, this one's a little bit more gory than the first one. And within the first five minutes, somebody's face gets shot off. And I was like, I heard, yeah. (laughs) Hard R for sure. Oh, yeah. And it it worked for it. I think this needed a hard R. Yeah. There's there's a lot of comic book movies I don't like when they try to push. Let's make it edgy. Suicide Squad is not one of those movies. It needs to be. It needs to be like a Wolverine or a um, Deadpool Deadpool or a uh, Punisher. It has to be that way. Otherwise, What's the point? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, there was two other um, Guardian cameos, one of them being the obvious uh, Sylvester Stallone as King Shark. Yes. I didn't know that until yesterday. Yeah. And then the other one, did anybody see Mantis? I didn't yes. See her. And you had said something going into it, but I yes, didn't see her. She, she was, she was the, the stripper. Club. Yep. Oh. <laughs> the one in the front. The one in the front in the middle. I knew that she looked familiar. Such, that was such a... Just a tiny cameo, <laughs> but it, that, that was, was definitely yeah. uh yes. Yeah, I definitely directed both of these movies, guys. I just want to let y'all know this. You know that's, <laughs> and I'm glad that he did because I don't think anyone. I mean, I'm sure somebody else could pull it off, but he he has shown that with Guardians and with that this that he can do major ensemble movies. Um. And also, he's just someone that you want to go to if you want, like, a gritty, off-the-wall movie. If you look at his yeah. movie history, stuff like uh, The Belko Experiment and Slither and all these different weird movies, that's what these movies need to be. They need to be a little weird. Yeah. So, let's now let's we got, we got all that out of the way. Now let's talk about the quote-unquote main cast. Let's talk first. Uh, Peter Capaldi, Doctor Who himself, is the thinker, which he basically played the doctor with a big head. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, Capaldi's not my favorite actor. He's not my favorite doctor either, but he's not the worst. Um, it is what it is. I I wish they didn't. I don't feel like they developed him at all. You don't really even know what his power is. Well, that's what I think. It, it would. I wouldn't call him a main cast member. I would just call him a, a a villain in this. Like he's not really. But he's a pretty big name, so that's why I would put him in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a big name, but I just don't think that. I think it was fine to do it. I don't need to know the thinker's power for this movie. Yeah, fair enough. He wasn't he didn't do enough as the the character, the thinker, to really yeah. justify like trying to explain his whole thing. Okay, now let's talk about the the character who didn't have an actor, Starro. Now, Starro is so steeped in DC history. It was it's kind of amazing how they did it. I loved there's parts of it I when he was walking, I didn't like it cuz he looked like a Power Rangers monster. Kind of, now you going to think about it, you're going to see it. But I thought they actually did pay a lot of respect to the character itself. Um and they made like you know, when, when you saw them pulling the stars off people's faces or took the skin with them, like, that's really true to the character. Yeah. Um, interesting character, and that's really all his powers, but he's made, I don't know, he or she, whatever it is, has made appearances in every Justice League cartoon, um, Super Friends, and the first, um, the first, Justice League comic book that had the modern cast of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern had Starro was the main, which I saw. I thought that was a nice thing to put in. Um, so let's talk other characters. We have King Shark, who was one of my favorites. He's he's Dra- he's Drax. Yep. Um, I have had and honestly, how that that um, the voice casting was perfect on that with Sylvester Stallone because it sounded like he just got done with that mm. you know 12 round fight with apollo and Adrian. It, he, he was hilarious <laughs> yeah and on he's not my favorite version of king shark because i mean there's throughout the years but there's been 
tons. My favorite version is actually the one that was in the um, animated Suicide Squad movie. If y'all saw that one, that's my favorite King Shark. But this one is, they made him cute enough, quote unquote, that he was sympathetic. Like when those little things go after him, you feel bad for this guy. This guy, he has no morals. He's pretty evil. <laughs> I don't think it's it's not that he's evil. He's a shark. Instinct, yeah. A, yeah, the the intelligence of a shark is to feed, which yeah. that's yeah. his intelligence. And he has a little bit more than that. That makes him the same mentality as like a that's little kid. That's a good kid. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only person that could have played him better was whoever played him as Bruce and Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> and um uh bruce abergeshi or whatever his name is the guy that you were talking about in the beginning uh with the beard the comedian from new girl that was oh, yeah. the, that was the actually character actor for king shark oh really that's mm-hmm. cool so yay okay so do you have some yeah um just just uh before we um just to kind of piggyback off of feeling sympathetic for like a, a villainous character did you feel sympathetic for starro at all no. At the end, when he's falling, and he said, "All I like, what did he say?" He said, "I was happy just floating around, looking at the stars." At that moment, I was like, "That is messed up," because they just pulled him. They pulled him sure. from space, and they experimented on him for thirty years. But when you know his and, history, you can't feel much sympathy for him either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I guess if you take yourself out of the history, yeah, that that could be a pretty sympathetic moment. Um. Uh, yeah, that and that was made for the newer viewer. Let's be honest on that. I mean, you gotta separate a little. Separate, bit yeah, you do. Movies, yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk. Actually, the most sympathetic or one of the two most sympathetic bad guys we had, Rat Catcher Two, um, and I love that they called her Rat Catcher Two because that is such mm-hmm. a bad DC um, <laughs> naming 80s, device. Yeah, <laughs> naming device. Well, you know, we have Boomerang Two and. Uh, Iceman 4, and they're going to get together. But she was... I didn't know... When they first called her a millennial at the beginning, I thought, oh, man, this is going to really suck for the rest of the movie. And they didn't go that way, and I'm very grateful they didn't. You know... I don't have to say it, but yeah. (laughs) Making it very difficult for them to do what they had to do if they were going to act, quote-unquote, millennial. I'm glad they didn't do that. But she was a good character. Great character. Yeah. I I still love the I, I love how she kind of shows her her youth. You know, once again, you know, he calls her the millennial because she's sleeping in, you know, the whole thing. And then when they're in the room watching the, the film, and then the lights come up and she's what's like that? Yeah. What's that? And you know, is like, why don't you throw it away? Why do you keep it? You know, moving on. But like that was just cool. Like I loved how they kept that that kind of role with her the whole time. Like the friendly. I'm not like this total war torn. I just I want to help. Like that was cool. And mm-hmm. she was one of the two characters that I didn't understand what she did to be in Bell Rev. She because she robbed, can control rats. Well, she robbed a bank and she was. So they they said that they charged her with armed robbery because she was robbing a bank and they were saying that the rats were a weapon. Well, the way that she uses rats in some scenarios shown in this movie is she has them like crawl down people's throats. So, yes, the rats are a weapon. Um, I think that's just it's a potential of danger yeah, from a, she just doesn't a seem bell rev worthy because right. she has too much of a conscience. You know, there's a sweetness sure. about it that you don't get out of anybody else in Belarus, except for the next character I want to talk about, which is Polka Dot. How great was this character? They took literally the stupidest character with the stupidest power and made him a fan favorite. I want to see more with Polka Dot. Yep. You know, I, and, oh. well, you won't. You won't. Spoiler alert, you will not. You won't. <laughs> uh, the movie's called Suicide Squad, just saying. <laughs> I think that was one of Tara's biggest gripes with this movie when we finished watching it and we were talking about it. She's like, why, why? They didn't have to kill him. They could have left him alone and it would have been fine. And uh, But yeah, 
I, I agree. I was just, I was yeah. like, I, I want to see more out of this character, but unfortunately. <laughs> well, th- that was a Sean Gunn thing. He picked Polka Dot because I quote, he is the worst villain in history. So of course he's going to kill him, but he made him sympathetic too. And I mean, everything was going, the mom thing was just so creepy. Creepy. Yeah. But yeah. And again, I don't know what he did quote, to get in there. That wasn't really his fault where he was. Oh, he probably killed. He probably people. did. Something. He probably definitely. As long as he, mad, he says he might have killed his mom. Maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe it was because he had to had to expel the the polka That's dots it, so often, and it yeah. made him a danger to society. Just mm-hmm. like the, I mean, Diablo was. You know, I yeah. mean, he did what he did, but. You know, maybe he had to expel the polka dots and killed people. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, too, is that maybe he was, like, in a crowded place and he had to expel them, and then he did, and they just went all over a bunch of people and just killed them. Did he play him too sympathetic, you think? Because because everyone wanted more. Is that too much hero for a villain movie? Just a thought. I don't think so. I don't but think so not, because these... They're not villains. They're bad yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. These characters are supposed to to cradle that line of being villain or hero. Some of them are a little bit on the one side. Others are a yeah. bit on the other side, as we'll talk about when we get to to some of the other characters in this. Yeah, show. they're like next level criminals, I think, rather than villains. Like if you went and got, you know, the Sinister Six or, you know, you went and got, you know, Lex Luthor and 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 Joker and all these super villains together, you know, then you have this then that's different for a suicide like the squad. Injustice the League of League, Doom. That's, yeah, the that's Injustice League, League, of League, of League of Doom. That's that you know, those are villains. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's where that's where the, the real suicide squad would happen. But these guys are just yeah. criminals that that's fair. are doing multiple multiple life sentences. Yeah. Okay. So before we go on to the rest of the cast. Um, real quick, since you've watched this far, you that means you probably like our stuff. So if you can go down and if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe, hit the like, comment on our Facebook, whatever it is that you do. We appreciate it a lot. And real quick, we have a contest coming up starting this week on our what if series. So you're going to want to tune in. You have to be you have to pay attention. We'll let you know exactly how to and how to apply. And there will be a prize. And it's not, I'm, it's not your parents saying it's a good prize. No, we'll, we'll let you know what it is when <laughs> <laughs> you get a hug from mom. No, uh, no, we do have, we have something particular that we wanted to um, do for all our listeners that are getting involved. So pay attention. What if, what if episode one, we'll let you know all the rules and everything that's going on is it's, it's going to be simple. There's not a whole lot of hoops. Okay. So now going back, now let's hit, um, I'm trying to, let, let's hit Harley. Um, Harley, I think, was better in this one than in the last one because she didn't play as much of a superstar. The first one, she was too much of the star. This one, she sat back and let her be part of the team. Now, props to Tyler because he said this, and I was like, I really agreed. How amazing was it how on mission she stayed sure. even yeah. after she was put in as, as as fodder she was still on which tells me this she has probably by this point between one and two she's probably been through 10 or 20 different missions with the suicide squad because mm. she was stayed on task she wouldn't have done that the first time but we know her timeline she was in suicide squad one Mm-hmm. Then after that, she was released, and then you had the emancipation of Harley Ugh. Quinn. We don't movie. talk about that one. Yeah, uh, you do talk about it because it's oh, part of the so timeline. Bad. Yeah, and um, but I think to to your point before of her not being such a star, and I wanted to, I was waiting for this to come up because I wanted to to talk about it. Because, you know, I'm not a big fan of her. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of her in this movie because they did not overutilize her. It wasn't the Harley Quinn show featuring the Suicide Squad. This was the Suicide Squad. And that's what made this movie work. Yeah. I think think the, the redemption piece, though, for me, like, I thought that, 
you know, that Birds of Prey was okay. Like no, Harley, no. the Emancipation <laughs> was 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 it was good. Okay, but it made this, Green Lantern look like Casablanca. Get right? out of here. Just it was talking, that bad. Skeeter, <laughs> it was talking. that bad. Ignore him. Jeez Louise. <laughs> but the 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 real thing, like in one, I feel like in one scene, she redeemed, like, and I said this last night while we were watching. I was like, in one scene, she redeemed herself. Like, literally, she like in that whole scene where she just blows through everybody, like even Griffin goes, uh, reload, like at one point, <laughs> but like all of a sudden she goes Pat, and the slides were back and everything was good. But I was like, dude, this is redemption. But I also loved how kind of she, the colors, the flowers, the, that stuff. That shows how nuts she is. That's yeah. her psychosis. Yep, yeah, it yeah. brought all that back. Just like the colored stuff when she was going through the the jail or the mm -hmm. the police station in in the emancipation, you know, all the colors and things like that. That's her. That was her mind again. Yeah. yeah. So, your thoughts on it. your thoughts on Harley Griffin? Um. Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed her. Uh. I I've enjoyed her every time. Um. Like just watching her character, I think Margot Robbie is just kills it. Uh, um, Tara Strong will always be uh, that, my Harley Quinn, but um, I think she's Miss Minutes now. Yes, I think, yeah, <laughs> but um, but I I knew her. It, it makes it pretty obvious what her role is in this film. Um, I definitely was expecting her to get a lot more, you know, runtime because she's such a popular character and if not probably the most popular character in the suicide squad um just because of the you know i mean they put her on the cover of the you know on the poster every time if they can i mean she's super marketable but besides that um i enjoyed it i mean she got her own movie which i didn't think was too bad but uh yeah no i i i think i enjoyed her her time in the movie i thought it was going to be more but they like hit every every part of yeah. her like psychosis when she kills the dude like without all she the was going through right. without overdoing it and i was like that was perfect like you look touch a little bit on on the joker a little bit and then that's it like that was good i was yeah. like i really I hope that the future showrunner or movie runners or whatever are watching how they did this not because yeah. i want a clone of this movie but he sean gunn did so much right and I don't think every DC movie should be like this, but he did so much right. There's there's elements, you know. I mean, this this could be like a Feige moment for DC. They, need, they, they definitely need to lean into this. This this was this was taking a step in the right direction for DCs where their movies in the past have just been lackluster. Like there's yeah. def, there's some, th so the DC universe for me anyway, is about moments. There's moments in the DC universe that are great. They're awesome. They make you jump out of your chair and get excited about it. But the movies as a whole, it just, they try and go in two different directions. This was like on Captain Marvel. Point. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. This was on point. Captain Marvel had <laughs> one plot line. I think we're seeing a pattern with why Dub doesn't like certain movies oh, um, stop. that we won't go into. But. Really, like because my favorite character in this movie is, you know, strong female character. Anyway, let's move on to um, Deadshot Two. Oh, I mean Bloodsport. Um, is is this I actually the most... liked better? Yep, I, th I think he did a better, better job than Will Smith. Uh, yeah. But switch it up a little bit i mean we are so close to exactly dead shot you know it's Flo floyd lawton is he's really important to um suicide squad in general so i think that they could have made him dead shot and no one would have cared they made him floyd mm -hmm. they already changed the character enough with will smith why not yeah you could have done it, it, but you also just, I mean, it's fine. Either yeah. Way. I didn't hate it, but it was, that was something that was just kind of like that, that that's one of those things that just kind of stuck with me for a little bit after about 10 minutes. I didn't care anymore. 
but I'm like, okay, so he never misses, and okay, and he's got a daughter, and okay, so Amanda's going to use his daughter against him. Okay, yeah, I didn't I see this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like in the it was like in the very beginning, you know, in that opening scene with you know you got great music by the way soundtrack. Oh on my point. god! Oh my goodness! John Gunn like, special. Here we go. Yes. So we're opening with Johnny Cash, like you got the racquetball bouncing, and all of a sudden, what does what does Rooker do? He freaking bounces that ball off the X's and then catches it without looking, right? And then the bird, right? The little birdie. He does the same thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did this guy replace Deadshot? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Because it's like there's too much similarity. And then all of a sudden we see. Bloodsport, and I'm like, wait, what just happened here? And then I got brought up to speed, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess it works. I mean, why, why change it? Like, you could have kept it the same; it would have made no difference. You know, you still had this, but the difference was the 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 relationship between dad and daughter for sure, yeah. uh, as we saw at the window, <laughs> but. Um, you know, it was, I loved his, his, his tools, like his, that whole gun piece was amazing. It's almost a crossbow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it had everything. Like that was just cool. Like went That's from this little tiny thing to this monstrous spinning Gatling gun. That, that said, uh, perfectly he said it was like the the nerf guns like his super yeah exactly nerf gun <laughs> yeah. that you put together um one thing I'd, I'd like to like point out too about you guys uh what you guys have been saying like it was like they've been doing that they could have done the same thing um i was going in with like dad was like okay this is like a, a reboot right and i said and he's like this is like a remake and i'm all yeah it's it's kind of a it's a redo it's not a reboot and it's not it's a, not a sequel. sequel. Yeah, it's just kind of like a another movie, but it, it has nothing to do with the first one, but it's still and he's like, Okay, and I, I liked how they had um uh, Michael Rooker's character and just so people don't get upset with us in the uh in the comments or the listeners, uh James Gunn, um uh, Sean Gunn is Weasel and and the calendar man in yeah, the yeah, movie. That's my fault. Uh, James James Gunn <laughs> He, I feel like it was a big, um, with Bloodsport and with Michael Rooker's character and all the characters he killed off and even Boomerang. Like, I feel like that was a big, like, hey, you think you know this movie? And then yeah. I, I feel like it was a big, uh, I'm not going to say it, but uh, uh, we're not going to do the same thing as the first one. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's In definitely a soft way. reboot for sure. Yeah. yeah. And it was just enough reboot, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't they didn't throw it away, the other stuff away, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. They kept no, all yeah. the best part and got rid of. Except the, for the one thing, part. and let's let's hit this one right now. I think the worst character in both the first and the second movie, I think, um, is Colonel Flag. I loved him in this one. Though. Oh yeah, really? Did you? Like yeah. He was yeah. better in this one, but I I think he, when he died, I was like, eh, okay. I was sad when he died. Yeah, they, me they, too. I was. To, I'm heartless. You have to have, you have, to have <laughs> a like for the normal film goer. You have to have other connections because not everybody's going to be like diehard comic book fans like us. And I feel like having that connection is like, yeah, he's just a dude. How? But the first one, this one, it makes sense. He's got character. He's got. He's a little more like personable. He's like, well, I, I don't know. I've been. I've been with these guys, these, you know, these criminals guys, for yeah. a while now, you know, so he's like, I, they're just going to do their thing. But the first one, he's like, I'm in charge. Go die. Do your thing. And he was that guy the whole time. So he I like have his one. He was. Yeah. He didn't have yeah. control over blowing up their brain or blowing off their head. Yeah. He they were like an actual friends. Like they were comrades. Yeah. Like, they were more of a team. Yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what makes to... this movie so good. He wasn't romantically involved in anything yeah. and, and like straight up, like I, I like to 
to call it the Peter Parker Gwen Stacy <laughs> event from the from the Amazing <laughs> Spider Man series when she yeah. died and it just became yeah. this hot mess. But like, I feel like he wasn't tied to anything but the team. Like he was he was all about it and. It was fun. Like he was having yeah. fun in this one. Yeah. Where the first one, he was so driven to the rules and yeah, it's good everything point. like that. I just I liked him more in this one. And he just the way he changed my mind. So okay, yeah. <laughs> he was only in the first one because of Enchantress. That was his only, yeah. and that was the worst like, mistake plot. of that movie. Exactly. Yeah. So if she yeah. wasn't in it, he wouldn't be in it. <laughs> well, he is pretty important to the the story arc of Suicide Squad. Yeah, the, the team, lore, yeah, and the, the comics, which, yeah. which tells me this: that the next character we're going to talk about it will be replacing Colonel Flag for the rest of, uh, in perpetuity, in per- perpetuity. Going forward, uh, Peacemaker, he, he is going to be taking this that role forever now, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's he, he, there is, he is set to come back. So we have John Cena. And I got to say, there's a couple scenes in there when John Cena says, we can't, uh, you can't see me. We can see you, John. We can see you. We can see you, John. <laughs> we can see you. <laughs> Such a horribly fantastic character. Amazing. I I went in expecting to hate John Cena because I'm not a John Cena fan in wrestling either. I thought I was going to hate every second that he was on screen. I'm like, it's with, when it started. Well, I, I I'll sh- I'll shoot us. I'll my bullet will go through your bullet because I use smaller bullets. I'm like, okay, this I. He said it was such a straight face. What? Ah. Uh, John Cena is finding the niche that he fits into. He is, he's finding that he is the like cheesy dad character in these movies and he's leaning into it and that's what will make him successful. Like, I don't think he'll ever be as successful as The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, but that's what's going to keep giving him work the same way that Dwayne Johnson has gotten. Um, because even you mentioned it earlier, the, the thing about, um, the thing that he says when they meet, uh, rat trapper Two about millennial, that's his character that they never had any intention to do anything like millennial with her. That's just, his character was making an assumption based on the first time he met her. Yeah. Uh, And that's the, that's the kind of that's the kind of person he is. He just is a complete D bag and he just is going to just make those assumptions. Um, And I don't, I I'm interested to see what they do with his character. I don't think we see him in a suicide Squad's sequel. He's getting his own show for HBO max. That's based on him. It's Um, called us agent. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) But I think that, um, I, I hope they lean into to Bloodsport. I hope that Idris Silva is willing to come back because I would I would not mind seeing him lead the Suicide Squad in in a sequel or two. Yeah, I I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, but no, going back to Cena for a sec though, he is. I loved every second he was on screen. I loved the character until the reveal. I mean, he was just, and then and even the reveal. I'm like, oh, that is so U.S. agent, kind of the same thing. And I was like, I'm in. This is who this character is. He's going to do the worst things in the world because the ends justify the means to him. I get it. He's the Punisher. I'm in. I loved it. Well, a little Dude, he hit hit every, I mean, every category in this movie that you could imagine, like the comedy, the action. The dude was just a mountain of a man, like (laughs) more ways than one, but like the, the, when they were coming up the beach for the love, if you were in the military, if you were in the Navy and the ship was pulling in and it was time to go on Liberty, the statement that he makes about Liberty and cleaning up the beach, Uh like, you know, for real, like that's something that you would do, especially after about 170 days at sea, like, you are willing to clean the world to get off the ship. So like all of these things that he did, just he nailed every piece. 
like even playing the switch, like doing all the things that he did towards the end. And like and he didn't telecast it. He didn't telecast. Nothing was At telecasted. All. He was beautiful. Oh, the, the whole scene in the jungle <laughs> with the impact or the compression, whatever. Bullet, yeah. And, you know, with the bullet yeah. and the dude blows up and Idris Elba turns around. He's like, nobody likes right. to show off. He goes, unless yeah, no, it's really cool. He's right. He's right. <laughs> and those like, two just, honestly, dude. Elba would not have been as good without Cena there because they played yeah. off each other so well. He didn't, sure. Elba didn't really shine, shine with anybody else except for Cena. Yeah. Cena's anybody got else that something see... special as a scene partner. Anybody else want to see his eyes turn gold for a second and say Jodenheim? Like, I just wanted to see it just once. Just one he time, said Jodenheim please. a few times in the movie, and I was like, ha, ah, I've heard this before. <laughs> yeah, and he hated the Marvel Universe from what I understand at the end, so eh, maybe we have him for DC forever. Yay. Okay, <laughs> so I got, we're going to have two questions. We're going to do our grading. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I had another forgot the most important character of the movie. Which one is that? R.I.P. Milton, man. Oh, no. R.I.P. Milton. Come on. He, he was the yeah the sacrificial lamb that you need. Such a good. That was such a good scene because we were watching it with my nephew and he was like, he's like the guy driving the buses with them. And Tara's like, no, he's not. And then we we saw him and we're like, yeah, that's really <laughs> weird that the guy. The, the, <laughs> yeah, he's and running really that the, the guy that's with driving. Them. Like, yeah. <laughs> Why didn't he have a red stapler somewhere? Because you have Milton. got to have a red stapler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that was so. And then for them to call it out and to have a whole, like, side conversation. Yeah. It was great. And Harley didn't know uh, Blood, Bloodsport's name at the end. Well, you're Milton. <laughs> I talked to you for two hours. Yeah. Which, again, shows you it's it's cool how in this one they really play with her crazy. Uh, like, mm-hmm. subtly play with her crazy. Yeah, without the not, without the, not yes. joke. She's not Joker. Don't make yeah. her as such. Mm-hmm. She's she's psychotic and she's crazy. In a cute way. It, but she just doesn't, it doesn't need to be over the top. Like it's just something like in her head. Yeah. 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 So here's, here's my question before we do the grading, who would you recommend? What type of person would you recommend this movie for? Let's start with you, Griffin. Uh, my lady, anybody who's <laughs> morbid and likes, uh, likes some gory stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Lies. Oh man, this is a that's a hard one because any I mean anyone who's a fan anyone who's a fan of Deadpool. If you were a fan of Deadpool and you were excited for Deadpool when Deadpool came out and they were testing the waters with a, a hard R comic book movie and and you enjoyed it, then this movie fits that um, fits that that groove for sure. Nice, Skeeter. I would say anybody that wants to see a proof that a Marvel director can do a DC movie right, that not this Joss is Whedon? it. Yep, not Joss Whedon. Gotcha. Not Joss Whedon at all. But like anybody that wants to see a, a solid comic book movie just i mean the only thing that this thing was missing was bubbles over their heads saying bang pow crash like the whole time this was it like yeah like they just james gunn did a spectacular job from beginning to end i don't think there was really any big misses um and it was just a win i loved it yeah that hard drive was a bit too conveniently placed. Yeah. Inside. That giant rack of servers and stuff. He's just like, doo, 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 doo. let me, oh, it this is. is it. This has it, all the information do on Do you it. want to watch five minutes of him searching yes. through the server? I want to see him go through every server to find And the then this movie would be drive. made only for blinds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let, let's do our grades. Now, I, wanted to, I want two grades. I want to hear the grade that you were expecting it to have before you watched it. And then the grade you finally gave it. Let's start with Skeeter. So, I mean, the the just the 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 comeuppance and everything, the trailers. I was really expecting this thing to to kind of just be 
hilarious and like just blown out of the box a plus plus like great movie and honestly i i wasn't disappointed i'm right at an a um because i can think it i'm re-watching it you know as we sit here i'm actually paused but i think it can be better um but yeah. it's not going to take much to make it better not at all including the post credits and uh, mid credits <laughs> and what do and you well, you finally gave it an a okay I gave it an a. what before um, you watch it I, and then after so before i knew everybody was going to say this movie is the greatest dc movie ever and it's the thing but honestly that's just because the guy who did it, james gunn but they don't know james gunn or I, a lot of people know him but like the guy who directed the guardians of the galaxy is directing suicide squad which think about it the only reason why the suicide squad got made in 2016 was the success from guardians of the galaxy and so everybody's gonna say this i've seen so many things on youtube this why the suicide the suicide squad is perfect why this and this and i'm like i get it okay but um i was ex expecting to be let down a little more because the expectations were so like people were building it up because it was a James Gunn film. And I love his films, but I love them because he makes them his own, not because he puts the James Gunn stamp on it. Like the yeah. soundtrack, I didn't really pay attention to it in the film. That wasn't the goal. Um, but the, the characters were, and he really like he really paid attention to the characters that needed the spotlight and he made you care about the characters. I guess that I could say he did that with Guardians too. But like this one, like Polka Dot Man, like how at the end, like it wasn't just the heavy hitters, like Boomerang, King Shark, you know, Bloodsport, Harley Quinn. It was um the team it was rat catcher too yeah. it was polka dot it was the the people that you wouldn't think that were there i mean you had harley and the staples sure but like um i i enjoyed it more than i thought i would because i had that expectation of going in like no matter what i think of it it's going to be a james gunn film and people are going to say it's the best dc film yeah <laughs> Blythe. um so i was going into this um Expecting a solid movie, um, kind of for the, some of the, the reasons that Griffin just described, um, is that James Gunn, over the past 10 years, has been making good movies. He's just been doing it. Um, so I was expecting a B, and probably a B because of the size of the cast. I was like, how... How do you juggle like he's good on ensemble movies, but how do you juggle that many characters all at once? So, um, and we like we said at the beginning of this episode, that's how you do it is how he opens up that movie. Um, so I left at an A. Uh, it wow. was just it was a solid movie. I enjoyed the first suicide squad first suicide squad movie for the reason for all the reasons that they brought over into this movie the stuff yeah. that they kept from the first suicide squad movie and they built off of in this one and then gave james gunn the freedom to do what he does best that's why this movie gets an a for me very good okay now as the diehard dc guy that i am i have um Resign myself to the fact that DC movies suck and anything that's not animated, I just it's okay at best. So I was going in thinking, okay, if this is a C, I'm happy with this. That's a success for them. I went into this movie, loved it for all the reasons I said, and I'm giving this an A minus. I mean, it, it might have been higher if the if Starro didn't look like a Power Rangers monster. Neither here nor there. But I enjoyed the heck out of this movie. This, I think this is, I'm hoping this is a DC comeback. I really am. Because if they're smart, which they aren't, um, 
I say, and, and I want to root for DC because I love the comics. I love the characters more than Marvel. And that's, I, I've always been on record about that. I hope they learn from this because this is right. You know, I mean, Wonder Woman was fantastic. Shazam was okay. Aquaman was okay. And then this was, you know, up, back up to that fantastic level. I hope they figure it out. So they this is the to, things that work. Not they need to lean into their. They need to lean into their B characters. They yep. need to step away from Batman. Superman and Batman and Aquaman. They need to, they tried that. They tried it and they did it too fast and it just didn't work out. And they can always go back to those characters, but they need to lean into the, the blue beetles and the, um, the arrow. I mean, you did great with, for a few seasons with your arrow, the young justice TV stuff, show. Basically. The, yeah, yeah. Young. Yeah, exactly. Young justice. Just lean into Martian Manhunter even like lean, lean, lean into, into star girl. Yeah. Lean into your B characters yeah. and get the ball rolling on your universe. Take your time with it. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think they need to, if I think they need to expand on, on, on Titans. I think if they can work on that and create something better from that, I mean, it's great as a TV show. It's great as a small screen unit. But I think that if they expand on that, develop the characters a little bit more, they can really put that on the big screen as something useful and use those smaller characters. And do what they did on this movie. Yes. Yes, totally. You know, or even lean into your TV universe. We're getting to the point where streaming and and TV shows are better than film. Give us a Suicide Squad show that's front run by James Gunn. He doesn't have oh to direct gosh. and write every episode, but let him let be the showrunner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just lean into that because their shows they're not terrible. No, you know, right. they have HBO, so they can they can have it right there. Exactly. I think that would increase HBO's viewership on top of it. So, with that being said. Uh, thank you all for listening. Remember to subscribe and check out our Patreon. Go to the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the combo we paid extra for it. Uh, go to the store, buy a t-shirt. Yay. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Skeeter, Griffin, and Blyze. Keep on geeking on, guys. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.